Hi everybody, it's Tom from Vehicle Visionary. I hope you're having a great day. Today we're going to take a look at the all new 2024 Hyundai Kona. And as you can see, in case you're not familiar with the Kona, well guess what? The first generation is on the left side of your screen and the second and current generation for 2024 starting in 2024 is on the right side of the screen. More distinctive exterior styling. I tell you what, you almost can't tell the difference between the non-EV version and the EV version as far as the way everything goes. Yes, the lighting across the front here all lights up. I'll see if I can find a place where I can show that to you at some point in the video, maybe get into a dark spot somewhere. The easiest way to tell the difference is that you don't have the charge port right here that you would have on the EV. But I'll tell you what, everything has changed here. The interior is updated. There are unique driving aids that are going to be something you'll find here on the Kona. Both models look good, but I tell you what, if you like the first generation over the second, Give it some time. I think it might grow on you. But wait until I show you some of the interior features. Now on the 2024 model that we're going to be taking a look at today, this is the limited trim level. It's the only one available for Mike Morgan Hyundai from where I borrowed this particular model. So if you're curious about that, now you know. And while there are a lot of distinctive changes to the exterior and interior, here is something else that you will find. A power lift gate, that's right. It's here and it's available on this limited trim level, among others. There's a lot going on here. Let's dig in to exactly what the changes are. And by the way, if you want to buy this exact model from Mike Morgan Hyundai here in Shreveport, Louisiana, check out the link down in the description of the video. So let's talk about styling differences first off. You can really see the difference. Number one, the design of the hood and where the shut line is. We're gonna have the Hyundai logo be below the shut line right here. And in this case, it's going to be above. It has moved into a completely different space. The overall design of the hood and the front end has changed. You can see on the 2023 model, the white model, that the blinker housing is on the top. It's moved down below the headlights on this 2024. And obviously a big difference between the grills. With the 2024 model, you're gonna have the active grill shutters. The grill obviously is in a different location with a completely different look. For the most part, a different location. And you can also see the difference from this vantage point as far as the side view mirrors go. We're still going to have the body color with the side view mirrors here on the limited trim level. There is the one of the favorite features I know a lot of you ask about. It's the turn signal indicator built into the side view mirrors. In fact, it's larger and elongated compared to what we had with the previous generation and a little bit more squared off. In fact, you can see the difference in how much more squared off the front end is. It looks like it has a little bit higher line the further out you get than what we had with the 2023 or the first generation model. And that is a difference. You can also see a difference with the door handles. Literally everything here has changed. A little more rounded off, a little more aerodynamic, we'll say, because of their shape as far as the door handles go. And let me show you something here as far as the remotes go. And just as is the case when we're facing the front of these two Hyundai Konas, we're going to have the remote for the 23 model on the left and the 24 on the right. And you can tell there are some big differences. A lot of great features are here. And it's a little lighter, honestly, but it still feels nice and sturdy. Not a big difference where that's concerned, but you will see that you have the ability to use remote start right here. And something else that you can do is the fact that you can also use your smartphone to basically replace the key as far 
as a proximity key goes and all of that good stuff. Pretty simple to talk about that. I think you probably understand what I'm talking about, but let's talk about some of the other changes on the exterior before we get too far into the interior. Here's what we have with the tail lights. And then we move over here, you're gonna notice the big differences. Everything is really different here, kind of really emulating what we see on the front end. Because you have the light right here that works its way all the way across. And much like with the headlights, the brake lights are going to be down here on the lower portion of the vehicle. This right here, if you're wondering what those flashing things are, those are turn signals. You can use them as hazard lights too. I know a lot of you don't understand what I'm talking about when I say turn signals. So maybe before the video is over, I will remember to show you how that feature works. And you'll still see the roof rails on both of these models, but you'll notice that there is a difference in this rear area where we have everything right here and the design of the rear roof spoiler. Everything takes a completely different approach, a different look, a different design in its angles and in its overall look. Hyundai really put a lot of effort into redesigning this Kona. I think they've done a good job. You can also see the differences in the side profile between the two from this angle. The only thing that I wish I had was the same exterior color on both. It'd probably make it a little bit easier to see that white exterior, at least in my opinion, shows off the body lines a little better. Let's talk a little bit more about what you're gonna find as far as what's under the hood with this 2024 model, at least on the limited trim level. As far as what's under the hood, we're not gonna see major changes in that area for 2024, but still, if you go with the limited trim level, you're gonna have the 1.6 liter turbocharged four cylinder. It makes a plentiful 190 horsepower. The torque numbers come in at 195. And for those who may not be in the know on these models, you might assume that you would have a continuously variable transmission. Not in this case. It's an eight speed automatic. That should make a lot of people smile. And how about those all important MPGs? 26 city, 32 highway, 28 combined, 3.6 gallons of gas per 100 miles in theory. And if you're curious, the gas tank size here is 13.2 gallons. And one thing, at least as a car guy that I like here, with the 23 model that I have right here, it has the prop rod to put the hood up and hold it up. Here, I was a little surprised when I opened the hood. It has the struts to help keep the hood open, to open it and keep it open. That definitely is a thumbs up for Hyundai. Okay, now in the next scene, I'm planning to show you the cargo capacity and tell you about the changes there and some other things as well. But you know what? We probably need to line these two up a little bit better. So who did such a bad job of doing that? Well, it doesn't really matter because guess what? I can fix that and here's how I'm going to do it. Make sure the vehicle's locked. I'm going to start it by holding down the remote start and then right here on the side of the remote, see these two buttons? Well, that's how we're going to deal with that. We're gonna push the button to put it into reverse and guess what? Well, actually I hit the wrong button, didn't I? Okay, now we're going to hit the correct button. That was my mistake put it into reverse, there we go. So we're going to see, yes, you can use this feature on the Hyundai Kona, a very nice feature. I think that's probably going to do a pretty good job of lining the two up. Before we talk about cargo capacity, why don't we talk about overall size differences? The smallest change in overall size is going to be width as the 2024 Kona increases its width by one inch. And wheelbase, which is measured from the center of one tire to the center of the other, increases by two inches. Overall length will be the greatest change of any of the changes where the size is concerned, as you will see an overall bumper to bumper increase of five inches. Here on the 2022 model, we're looking at 19.2 cubic feet up to 45.8 cubic feet of cargo capacity. With the size difference that we talked about in the previous scene on the 24 model of the Hyundai Kona, 
How much more cargo capacity can you expect to find? 25.5 to 63.7 cubic feet. That's a pretty good increase in cargo capacity. Tell me what you think about that. You're still going to come right back here and lower everything down. And because I know a lot of you like to see both sides lowered as far as our rear seats go, well, guess what? I'm going to do that for you. I may have to move. In fact, hold on. Okay. Now that I moved the passenger side seat forward, here is how things look with both sides folded down. It's got a little bit of an angle to it, but not too terribly bad. Obviously, you can remove the cargo cover here very easily and get that out of the way to truly maximize your cargo capacity. But you can see what you have there as far as that goes. You do have some space underneath the floor right here as well. A little bit of cargo lighting in this rear area, only on the one side, but I think that will be enough in this area. Overall, a pretty large increase from one generation to the next as far as your cargo capacity goes. You'll notice I didn't say anything about towing. Seeing a Hyundai Kona towing something is about as likely as seeing a hearse towing a U-Haul trailer. And we'll take a look into the 2023 Kona's back seat area. You can see what we have here as far as that goes. It does have the fold down armrest with the cup holders built in. And you're going to have one USB option here on the back of the center console, but no air conditioning vents. And one thing I do want to do here before I make any other changes or hop into the other model is see, are there going to be differences in size? At five foot 10, that's how much space I have above my head back here. And now we'll take a look into the back seat of the 2024 Hyundai Kona. We'll see that there seems to be a little more space back here. And guess what? Air conditioning vents here on the limited trim level. You will also find two USB options and a little bit of space in there. The overall look is gonna change a little bit the design of that fold down armrest with the cup holders built in. But how about that all important space? There is definitely more space back here. Now, I mean, not a lot of head space, but I tell you what, I don't feel as cramped here. And with a larger vehicle comes a larger interior. So guess what? That is a win, but I tell you what, we're gonna move my stuff out of the passenger seat up there and talk about what you'll find in the front seat area. All right, let's take a peek into the front seat with the 23 model of the Kona, just to show you what's here so we can see the differences between the two. Look quick, because we're not gonna spend a lot of time on this particular model, but I'm gonna let you see what the differences are between the two as we go to the 24 model. All right, here we go with the front seat area, a little bit more of a dedicated tour on the 24 model of the Kona. You can see that, well, there's definitely some differences here. Now here on the limited trim level, you're still going to have the manually adjustable passenger seat and the power driver's seat. You can see the overall look of the design. And speaking of the design, let's take a look at what we have across the dashboard. A little bit of space right here. Cell phones could possibly fit there. And then one thing that is different. I'm gonna talk a little bit more about this area when I hop into the driver's seat. But one thing that is different is what you don't see in this area, the shifter. It's moved right here. Now you'll have to tell me what you think about that when I give you my own point of view POV from the driver's seat because of the different location of that shifter. But here is what we have overall as far as the look goes. Here is your center console and the space that you have right there. Going to have the removable tray here if you want to use that or you can take that out. Still going to have the cup holders here that can be moved out of the way. That's going to increase space right here. So really nice option as far as that goes. Not necessarily a new feature. I like that. It's what's there. But let's talk a little bit more about what you'll find from the driver's perspective. Like I said, from the driver's perspective, here is what we have. And the good thing is, depending on trim level, you can have the cameras that will show you what's going on in your blind spots. Now that flickering effect that you see, don't worry about that. You can see that's kind of improved a little bit. That's based on the shutter speed of my GoPro and some other factors. Just so you know, here's what we have with the steering wheel, steering wheel mounted controls, 
and there's that thing even on this 23 model. It had those blinkers that I was talking about earlier that you, when you're changing lanes to the right or turning to the right, you push it into the up position and the same thing for the left, that's into the down position. I know that's a novel idea for a lot of you, but it is there. And just a quick look through the infotainment screen here as far as what we have with everything, just to show you what all is here, everything with the air conditioning and how all of that works. There is where your wireless charging pad is, connectivity. Now there is a big change right here in this area. I'll show you what that is when we hop into the other model. And here was the thing, I didn't really focus on this here with the 23 model, but here is your shifter as far as that goes, instead of having it located behind the steering wheel. And here is your camera view. You can see that you have the backup sensors there on the rear and obviously you still have your camera view on the screen. So that's helpful and that's good. If you want to use your seats, your heated seats here, well, you can do that as well. That's going to be in this area. You can see the overall design as far as what's here. Here's what the center console looked like for 2023 and earlier as far as the first generation goes. So there are changes where that's concerned. Do you like the new design where that's concerned? Now let's hop over into that 2024 because there are some significant changes to the dash. All right, here is the difference in the overall look. A new screen, it has a little bit of a curvature to it right here as you can see. It's driver focused, pointed towards the driver. In fact, this whole area is just a little bit, not a lot, but it is there. You can also see who doesn't have their seat belt on back there in the back seat area. Kind of an interesting thing but you can see the differences here. Now, some of this is going to be based on trim level. This is one reason why you want to use your blinker. And something that I like here is when you turn the blinker on, you notice how you have your digital instrument or your digital speedometer right here. If you turn on the left side blinker, not only do you see the blind spot there with the camera that's mounted in the side view mirror, you also see the speedometer up there. That's a nice feature. And over here, you're going to see the same information that's going to be on the right hand side when you do that. So that helps a lot. You're going to have your shifter paddles here for working your way back and forth through that eight speed automatic transmission if you want to. And then steering wheel mounted controls. Quite a few things have changed here. Very, very nice updates. But the screen is what has changed the most, I'd say, as far as the interior goes, at least a really nice look, a very modern look. Very easy to navigate, very easy to use. You can go into setup right here and change pretty much anything you might want to. You can hit home right there. There's a lot going on here. I'm going to tell you what, I am very impressed with what Hyundai has done. You have your online manual right there, so you can use that. Now, there are some things I'm not going to do here. Obviously, you'll need to use the barcode right there, or excuse me, the QR code, not a barcode. Boy, that did I date myself on that? There's still barcodes around in this day and age. But anyway, you can kind of get an idea. Now, the one thing, depending on where the steering wheel is located, well, that might determine what goes on here with the shifter. So how exactly does that work? To go into drive, this section right here, you don't actually move the shifter right here. You move this. That's going to put you into drive. And then you can go down into reverse. And when you do that, you're going to have the rear view camera come on, your overhead view. Quite a bit going on there as far as that goes. And look at that. 360 degrees. You can see what's going on around the vehicle. We can even see that, well, even though it's not white, but you can see that we have the same color next to us as far as what's here. So a lot going on there. I'm very impressed with that. And right here is how you're going to go into park. But the cool thing about that is that if number one, you turn the engine off without putting the transmission into park, it's automatically going to go into park. If you open the driver's side door, it will automatically go into park. That's a good thing. And then you can see your one touch options here for the screen. There's how you turn on those hazard lights. A lot of this I likely don't need to tell you too much about, but you know what? One thing that I like here is the lack of the piano black or that gloss black finish that fingerprints up so much. You really can't fingerprint this finish, a brushed aluminum finish. It looks nice. It's going to stay that way. Your dual zone climate control here, 
control everything here from the front seat area as far as that goes. Wireless charging. But one thing I want to show you right here, have you ever been in a vehicle where the driver plugs their phone in and then the passenger does and things just get kind of mixed up? Well, guess what? That's what this is for. So you can actually determine what phone is being used to give information to the screen. I like that. Very simple. I just explained that as, as easily as I could, as simply as I could. Now, again, based on trim level here, heated seats, heated steering wheel. There's what I want today. Ventilated seats. I really like that. I need that today. It is warm. In fact, here's the thing. 9.33 a.m. And look at the temperature. It is 89 degrees. And actually, I think it's 10.33 a.m. But still, this clock hasn't been reset. But that's okay. Here in a few weeks, it won't matter. But there you go. So that's what you have. You're also going to have your drive mode selector. That's always a good thing. Let's see what happens when we change our driving modes. We only have a couple of driving modes. So sport and normal, that's all you're going to have. You can see some changes that take place there where all of that is concerned. But I tell you what, I'm pretty impressed with what I've seen so far. And while there's nothing significant changed under the hood, let's see what it's like to drive this particular model. It does have a conventional size sunroof up there in case you were curious, and even a power shade. And obviously the sunroof itself is power. I'm opening that up just so you can see what's going on where that's concerned. And then we can close that back up. It obviously slides open. That's nice and convenient. In fact, it's nice and convenient because I can show you everything that's going on with the test drive without having to mount you to the windshield. By the way, guys, while I'm making some changes here as far as our positioning goes for the video, there is the front view camera. And you can see the overhead view and the sensors letting me know what's going on around me so I don't accidentally end up buying a 2023 Hyundai Kona that I don't intend to buy. Okay, now that we're out on the road for the test drive, I want to tell you about a couple of things that make a difference here. Number one, in sport mode, it definitely accelerates really well. We're going to go on by the Telluride here real quick. Yeah, real quick for sure. The ride quality has improved as well. And let me just let you listen. I don't know if you can tell the difference or not, but the interior is definitely going to have an improvement with a lack of road noise compared to the first generation of the Kona. I, I really like what Hyundai has done here. I think they made some significant changes where that is concerned. The seats are more comfortable. That's for sure. A different design here for the seats. I noticed that that's going to help with your overall ride quality as well. So overall, a lot of fun to drive and, and some people might say you know i don't know that it has enough horsepower well i guess that depends on who you are and what you're used to but in my personal opinion for an suv of this size i think it does just fine and obviously as you can see right here well a great turning radius nothing you wouldn't expect but i tell you what i could really tell a difference i've driven in both driving modes and there is a little bit of a noticeable difference in sport mode compared to what we have in normal. So a very enjoyable vehicle to drive. I, it just, when you get in to the 24 compared to the 23 and earlier, you can feel a difference. I don't want to say that the first generation necessarily felt cheap, but there is a noticeable difference to the overall feel and the quality of what you have here. The updated screens, uh, very much like what we see in the 2024 Buick and Vista, but actually better, but it is somewhat comparable. But I like this, it has a little bit more screen to it than what we have there. I think it looks a little better in my personal opinion. Overall, a very nice vehicle. Technology isn't hard to learn. Everything seems to be going very well where all of that is concerned. So I have to say, Thumbs up Hyundai. I can't wait to see what else is coming in the future with some of the newer models that are, have also been redesigned or at least have some changes. Hyundai is definitely going in a very positive direction, I would say, with what they're doing. So far to this point, at least. 
And for that person on the next to last row, the third seat from the end that was saying, Tom, I want to see a nose to nose comparison. There you go. Now you see them nose to nose. It does make it a little bit easier to see the differences in the body lines on the side of each model. So tell me what you think down in the comments section, everybody. Did Hyundai make the right changes? This is the 2024 Kona. Yes, there are some significant changes. There's a few things that have remained relatively the same, but exterior and interior wise, we've really seen some big changes. What do you think? Are you in favor? I'm always curious to know what your thoughts are. I have to say a special thanks to my friends at Mike Morgan Hyundai for loaning me this 24 Kona for the day. And a special thanks to each and every one of you for taking the time to watch and give me an opportunity to give you a vision for your next vehicle. If you enjoyed this video and haven't subscribed to the Vehicle Visionary YouTube channel just yet, please consider doing so. And if you would like to learn about other vehicles you may wish to consider purchasing, check out the video that's on the screen right now, and I will see you there.